Good afternoon, all. Uh, I'm Andrew uh, from Restaurant A Wong in Victoria. As we hopefully get to something that is approaching the end of lockdown, so restaurants may soon be allowed to open. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to uh, teach you some important principles, I think, of Chinese cookery. And although um, this this class really teaches you two dishes, which are very kind of old school, more tra traditional Cantonese dishes. Um, it's the principles behind them, which really um, means that if you understand those, those, those foundations, you can really cook multiple, multiple um, Chinese stir fries with ease and um, which, which give you a, a, an end product, which is, which is really delicious and very, very close to what you might get in a restaurant. So the fundamentals of any stir fry in Chinese cookery is number one, it's the marination process. So the marination process for Chinese cookery is very unique. Um, you've got the recipe and the way that we do it and the ingredients that we use, it basically allows you um, to create a really soft texture with any protein, whether it be fish, prawn, seafood, uh, chicken, lamb, you mean the only thing in that recipe which you might need to slightly modify would be the amount of uh, baking soda. And what is baking soda? It seems like a strange ingredient to put into a stir fry for a marinade. But the baking soda, what it allows, it's, a, it's an alkaline powder. So what that will do is it will break down the protein inside the, um, inside the meat and it will basically create a softer texture which is very important when you're stir fry, when the cooking process from start to finish can be under three minutes. Marination is one side. The other side of the Chinese cooking is the sauce base. So the biggest mistake people make when they're cooking Chinese sauces is they try to make the sauce whilst doing everything on the side. It's a big no-no. With all Chinese food, what it really should be, it should be the sauce should be created, your marinated product should be uh, prepared, and then when you come together, it's basically just the marinated protein being mixed in with the sauce, thickened, and then you serve straight away. Now, what are those fundamental sauces? So, fundamental sweet and sour is a very, very classic one. The recipe that I've given you uh, is probably a very, very traditional one, which is been, which has been popularised in Hong Kong and been popularised throughout the UK over the past fifty or so years. Black bean sauce. So black bean sauce, um, I can tell you, is if you ever don't know what to, where, where to get black bean sauce, uh, our, our team at A1, we've started to sell them. Uh, you can either get them from uh, our online shop uh, from www.a1.co.uk or uh, you can go to one of our suppliers, uh, which is called Meat Meat Home, and they are basically selling uh, a lot of the meat for also these sauces which are available. So the sauces come in 50 ml jars and they're basically really really concentrated flavour. So this one here is black bean. Oops, I'm leaking it over the place. Black bean. So this is this cooking process to make this sauce. It's basically salted black beans which have been fermented. That's about uh, an 18 month process and then we bring it into the kitchen, we rehydrate them and then we cook them uh, with some garlic, some ginger, some dry tangerine um, and some other seasonings and we slowly simmer it for about uh, two hours and what you end up with is this relish. Uh, this relish. Um, this relish here and basically when you use this it's going to be the foundation of the sauce. So when you put this into a pan you can add some water, some chicken stock, then you slightly uh, correct the seasoning Thicken it, add your protein, and that's another dish. The other sauces that we have available, uh, one is a, it's a dried shrimp chili. Uh, again, really, really salty and umami heavy. And then the third one that we have is this one, which is, um, it's basically what we call uh, a meat paste. So it's, it's an exo sauce made from Wagyu beef. I put all the sauces here at the front. 
So you can get them either from the website or if not, you can go to the normal two Chinese supermarket and you can buy any brand that you like. So today we're gonna to cook the sweet and sour chicken and the black bean uh, chicken as well. And why I picked these two dishes is because most of the garnishes are very, very much, uh, very similar. So we're gonna start preparing the veg. What have I got here veg rice? We've got for these two dishes, we've got some spring onion, a red pepper, a green pepper, some pineapple and an onion. I mean, this one is a red onion, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so we're gonna start cutting the pepper. So the pepper, I've just basically, I've taken the top and the tail off. I'm gonna remove the core. I'm just gonna take out that center core and the adjacent slightly whiter warmer bits, should I say. The bits that are probably less sweet. After that, I'm just gonna cut it into a, a small dice. Like so. Again, when you're cooking at home, you know, you can cut it into any shape you like. And then the important thing to remember is that whatever shape you choose or whatever size you choose, try to keep it uniform across all the vegetables. So that at the end of your dish, uh, all the vegetables that have been cooked for the same amount of time will be the same amount of doneness. Again, we're using two types of pepper. You don't have to. You can you can stick to one type of pepper if you wish. Um, I personally I always make sure that there's definitely some red pepper because it's slightly sweeter. And then again, with a lot of Chinese food, the really important thing is that you must do the prep before you start cooking. I know everyone really gets really excited when you bring your shopping home and you know you do want to get going get cracking with that recipe and you just start cutting stuff up and you start putting stuff into a pan um, without any real kind of consideration of of cooking times um or the order in which to do things it makes a massive difference if all your stuff is prepped beforehand believe me that's it throughout this class if you guys have any questions uh, or if you, you want to ask me anything, please feel free. Just drop us a, a message. Onion, and then we've got the pineapple. Okay. So this is our veg. When it's cut, it should be neatly arranged like so. Uh, and then you're basically good to go. Okay, next bit is the marination process. I know it sounds like a really strange set of ingredients. You have to bear with me on this one. So you've got um, you've got your chicken here. Chicken, just say it's been in your fridge for a while, a few days. The first thing to do, I would always. Um, I know some people say it's not good to to wash chicken because of surface bacteria. But I think if you're careful and you disinfect the area afterwards, I would always recommend just running some water over just to remove any um, surface bacteria or any um, debris that might be on there. I don't know what it's been doing in your fridge. Maybe you dropped something onto it. So I would just, we'll just run it under some cold water. So when it comes out of the sink, what it will be done, you have a little bit of residual water still lying here. And I think the important thing, I've got a question here saying, thank you for going slowly. Oh, that's because I'm useless. Uh, <laughs> I should probably go with it a bit quicker, but then um, I'm glad you, you're enjoying the, the, the slight delay in, in the presentation. So anyway, we've got our chicken here and there's still some residual water because after I've tipped out, there's still some there. This is really important. 
basically what you want to do is that you want to get your hand and you want to basically stir this chicken. Believe me, you're going to have to trust me on this one, right? Trust me on this one. Just bear with me. Just do it and don't skip any of the steps. Because if you skip any of the steps, your chicken won't be tender. So what are we doing here? What you will find is that as you stir this chicken, more of the moisture will go inside. So all that residual water that you saw that was lying on the surface of the chicken, that will all disappear. If it doesn't disappear, you need to stir more. So we're stirring, 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 stirring. And all the water has effectively disappeared. Okay, so now the next step we're going to do is I'm going to add the salt. There, there is no salt. I mean, soy sauce. Sorry. Soy sauce. Soy sauce, which is obviously uh, the equivalent of salt. It also contains some moisture, which is important because we're going to keep on stirring again here um, in order for the liquid to go into the chicken and for the flavor to be uh, going to the chicken. Okay. Now we've got a little bit of seasoning there. What we're going to do is we're going to add the, the baking soda. The baking soda according to the recipe. As I explained before, the reason for this baking soda is to basically tenderize this chicken. Now, ideally what we want to do is that we want to marinate this chicken and you want to leave it for probably um, at least half an hour. But, um, what I will show you is that if you do this now and follow the recipe, uh, basically this marinade will begin to get to work very, very quickly and you will probably notice a difference by the time we cook it in real time. Okay, so now we've got the tenderness in. The bicarb is in. We're going to add a little bit more aromat. So we're going to add the Chinese rice wine in. Chinese rice wine. Stir, stir, stir. And what you'll find if you're following this as we go along is actually the chicken is becoming very, very dry. All that liquid is going into the chicken, right? You could, there is actually a potential here if you wanted to, you could add more water to this. So it's like making a mayonnaise. You know, people always say that when you're making mayonnaise, you have one egg yolk to however much oil. Actually, if you were to triple the amount of oil in the mayonnaise, it would still emulsify. And with this, it's a similar principle. This chicken has an incredible ability to absorb a lot more water. So, you know, depending on the chicken, depending on the breed, uh, depending on the origin, you know, you might want to add more or use less water depending on the outcome that you prefer. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we're gonna do is that we are gonna put some potato starch into it. We've got potato starch. Now, why did we put potato starch? It's an interesting question. Now, the reason why we put potato starch is because basically we've tenderized the chicken now and we've added the aromats for flavor. Now we want to lock that in. We want to seal it. So how do we seal it? We seal it by coating the outside with potato starch. So that's got one layer now. Okay? And then the second bit is we're going to add a second protective layer over this chicken by adding an egg white. Now, what does the egg white do? What the egg white does, basically it creates a second coating around the chicken. Why is that important? Well, if you get raw chicken and you just stir fry it, uh, you can use corn flour instead of potato starch, and you can use any starch. Um, just avoid things like tapioca starch because they can get quite sticky. So why do we use this egg? The egg basically it encapsulates and it, it creates a, a, a coating around the potato starch coating. And that means that when we cook it, what happens is that when you put it into the oil, you're not frying it. You're effectively steaming the chicken. So if you're frying, it goes up to a much higher temperature than when you're steaming. The maximum obviously temperature when you're steaming is 100. When you're frying, you know, your stove can go up way above 100 which is why when you put raw chicken in a pan, 
you get that kind of that dryness on the surface of the chicken sometimes. If you do this process and you've encapsulated it twice and then you pass it through oil, you won't get that dryness because you're not getting the chicken above that temperature. So constantly stirring and stirring and stirring. And what you will find, which I'm finding now, is basically all that mixture has gone into the chicken. That's it. That is the marination process. And now this, this marination now, you can sit that in your fridge um, for um, a day without any problems. Or if you're going to make a, a larger batch, for example, uh, if you like to batch cook at home, then you can marinate it all. You can wrap it up into portions of cling film, uh, I don't know, 150 grams or 300 grams, and then you can freeze it in those 150 gram portions. And then as you need it, uh, the night before, you take it out, put it on a plate, into the fridge, let it defrost naturally, uh, whilst keeping all the marinades on it. Uh, do not wash it under running water to defrost. And then as you need it, you can just take out one portion at a time to use. You can change the garnishes and change the sauce base to create multiple stir fry recipes. Okay, so let's move on now to the sweet and sour sauce. The sweet and sour sauce is a very, very simple sauce. Um, the recipe that I've given you is one which is probably the most classical. Uh, I've got to be completely honest with you. It's not exactly the recipe that we use in the restaurant, only because in the restaurant, we um, add other garnishes to the dish. So we use a little bit of Thai basil, you know, we add um, a little, some tomato powder, this and that, and that, which means that actually the, the sauce needs to be slightly different. But if you're cooking a very, very classical um, Cantonese style, or they call it sweet and sour chicken Hong Kong style, this is the recipe. So if I was running through it, in case you didn't get the recipe, it's 150 ml of vinegar, 100 grams of sugar, 35 grams of tomato sauce. Look, we've all got a certain brand of tomato sauce in our household. It's not a problem to use that. But I would say that if you do use that or you use other brands of ketchup, be careful because they all contain different amounts of sugar. Uh, and that is the determining factor for this sauce. So you've got ketchup, you've got some Worcester sauce, uh, 15 ml, and then you've got a little bit of lemon juice to your flavor. Uh, just remember Worcester sauce is not vegetarian, uh, but nor is chicken. But Worcester sauce is a fish, so if you're allergic to fish, don't put it in. Um, and then basically what we're going to do, we're going to bring this sauce up to the boil. We're going to bring it up to the boil, basically dissolve the sugar. Once this is ready, you can leave that. You can leave this sauce in your fridge for probably three or four days, and it will keep very, very well. And then you can bring this for one day, you can use it as a sweet and sour sauce. Um, the only thing you have to, we have to do is that we need to thicken it a little bit with some cornflour, sorry. Maybe the next day you want to cook, I don't know, a uh, sweet and sour vegetable dish. Again, same sauce. Um, or maybe one day you want to use it as a dip instead for, I don't know, um, some vegetables. Or you want to use it as a dip for your KFC or you want to make a dip for your steak. Then all I would do, I will bring this sauce up to the boil and I would thicken it with cornflour until it gets to a ketchup consistency and then I'll use it on the side. Uh, basically all it is, is basically a more um, oriental flavoured uh, ketchup. Okay, so now this has been brought up to the boil. As you see it is quite red. Quite red. Again, when you cook this, you will get a big strong flavor of vinegar going in your face, so be careful. When that's done, I'm going to move it to the side. And so effectively, once you get to this stage, you are pretty much ready to cook. Uh, your sauce is ready, your sweet sour sauce is ready, your black bean sauce is ready, your corn flour ready for thickening is ready, your chicken, which has been marinated, is ready, and all your vegetables are prepped. So I'm just going to prep a little bit more veg, um, just for garnishes at the end, and then we are ready to cook.
as I said, please feel free to, to ask any questions. So, what we're going to do first and first is we are going to pass the chicken through some hot oil. Why do we do that? It's to basically cook the chicken. So we've got our chicken. For the sweet and sour uh, black bean chicken dish, there is one defining difference with that and sweet and sour chicken. Now, black bean chicken, normally what we do is that we don't pass this mixture through dry corn flour before frying. But if you're cooking um, sweet and sour chicken, you will pass it, you'll coat this ch marinated chicken in some corn flour before frying. Only for corn sour chicken traditionally, it has a light batter on the outside. Okay, so if I'm gonna coat in chicken, I'm just gonna pour some corn flour onto my plate. Like so, and I can dust the chicken in at will. Because I'm cooking chicken, uh, I'm going to fry the chicken that doesn't require a batter first. Uh, why? Because once I start putting the batter in, it's going to start having bits of flour all over the place, which I don't want. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up to the boil. If you have a oil a thermometer, like so, what you want to do, you want to get an oil to so about 190. If you don't have a thermometer, uh, you can put a little bit of bread in, uh, which you can tell if it goes into the pan and it starts to sizzle straight away, that means it's ready. Or if you're feeling really daring, you can put a drop of water into it. And if the oil is really hot, it will go pop and bang inside the oil. What type of oil is this? This is your regular vegetable oil. Just remember one thing, which is basically when you fry, um, when you fry, Things I wouldn't use sesame oil. I'm going to put half in. This is for the black bean chicken. Black bean chicken. I'm putting all the chicken in and I'm just rolling it around the oil to basically seal the outside. Right, does it need to cook all the way through at this point in time? No. I think it needs to get to about 80 to 85 percent cooked by this point in time. And what you'll see is that the chicken, the, the egg on the outside, it will create a, a, a barrier on the outside of this uh, chicken. And it'll almost feel like there's like a, a light, um, really thin egg film over the um, surface of the chicken. Now, with most Chinese food, I think the important thing is a lot of it is in the preparation. You know, the actual cooking is very, very quick. I mean, in a in a normal dinner service in a restaurant, you know, we only have 70 covers, but we probably cook about 600 plates of food, and we only have um, three people actually cooking throughout the evening. There's three people cooking 600 plates of food in a five-hour service, um, and all that is because everything is prepped beforehand. What we need to do is cook the, uh, the protein like this into uh, a wok, uh, stir fry, and then you're ready to go. So if you look at the chicken, it's near enough cooked through. And start taking it out. And you know, if you're trying to find applications of this process into your everyday cooking, I think this is probably one of the most useful techniques to apply to any cuisine. Because, you know, if you put it for your casseroles or for your pies um, or, or for any other dish that requires normally like slow braising, 
Uh, what you're going to create by doing this process is a much better mouthfeel to the end product. Okay, so now that's cooked, now we're going to start uh, cooking the chicken in batter. Again, chicken cooked on the side, ready for stir fry. Now the other bits of chicken we're going to do is we're just going to dust it in corn flour. Be generous. Corn flour all over the top. Again, the thicker this corn flour, the thicker the batter. Now, a thick batter doesn't always mean a bad thing because actually when we run it through a sauce, what will happen is that if it's got a thicker batter, it will basically stay crisper. So we've got our chicken pieces, right? Heavily coated in batter like so, or in corn flour. Just gonna drop it into the oil. Again, if you're having a dinner party and you wanted to cook this, you know, just about, just before your guests arrive, what you could do, if you, uh, you really enjoy the whole uh, introduction to your dinner party, you don't want to be spending it in the kitchen. What you can do is that you can do this first frying process uh, before they arrive. Do that first and then leave it on the side on a wired rack. And then when you're good to go with actually serving the chicken and stir frying, you just quickly, um, run it through some oil quickly and then uh, put it into the sauce. So we have a question here which is what setting are you frying at? So we are setting, if, I, if you have a setting of one to six, I'll put it on maximum. What you don't want to do is if your oil isn't hot enough, what will happen is that when you drop this uh, corn flour chicken into the oil, it won't cook straight away. So it end up, all the flour will basically fall off the chicken. And because we're frying this with batter, I'd also recommend putting just a little bit, uh, some paper towels into your your bowl to drain them out onto. And just be careful, you know, I mean, this is, this might seem like common sense, but, you know, if you cut your chicken into larger pieces, obviously it's going to take longer to cook. Um, you know, so if you're in a rush one day, the, the easiest thing to do to accelerate the marination process, accelerate the frying process, accelerate the cooking process, it's cut your chicken into smaller pieces. Okay, so we are getting now very, very close to the end product. Now, as I said with the end product, with any Chinese dishes near enough, it's pretty much universal to do stir fries. It's basically, it's the marinated protein, and then when you start frying, it's normally, if you're using it, it's ginger and garlic into the pan for aromats. For these two dishes, we don't necessarily have to use them because we've incorporated the aromats already into the sauce. Right? Then you add the protein. After you add the protein, you normally add a little bit of rice wine just to deglaze the pan. Then you add the sauce. You add the sauce, you thicken, then you finish. That as a set of processes is pretty much universal. I believe that if you guys have joined a little bit late or um, I've gone a little bit too quickly on some parts of this recipe, the entire video will be available on, on YouTube. Um, Victoria did will be probably posted up in the next 24 hours or so. 
Uh, and as I said before, if you need to get hold of some of these sauces, um, you can either get them from the online store of the restaurant, which is uh, AWOL. Uh, there's an online store there. Um, it's, I think it's at the moment, it's, it's pretty much 24 hour delivery. Um, so you can get them and they can be with you uh, pretty much tomorrow or Saturday. Okay, so the chicken is now cooked. If you look at this chicken now, it ba I'm gonna, I don't want to trivialize it, but it basically looks like KFC. Um, now at this stage, you could very, very easily just add salt and pepper to this and it would be absolutely delicious. And if you didn't want to add that, you want to add something else to it, you could just add some salt, some black pepper, you could fire some garlic and some fresh, uh, some fresh spring onion and some chili, and that would become salt and pepper chicken. Uh, we're not doing either of those dishes today. Uh, we're going to do sweet and sour chicken. Uh, but the principles are there for you to play with. Now, with the other sauces that we have available, one is a, a Wagyu beef meat paste, and the other one is a, a dry shrimp exo sauce. They are the basic, the basis um, of any stir fry. So you use the ad, you buy those, and you use them as the starting uh, building block of your dish. You're not really going to go wrong because it will basically give your dish all the seasoning that it needs, uh, all the umami that it needs. Uh, so basically all you have to do is just basically add the protein and the vegetable to it. Now these dishes as well, you see them in Chinese supermarkets, they're very, very versatile. You can use them, you know, to put on top of salads, you can use them as dips for meats, uh, you can put them as a, a rui on top of a soup. Uh, they're basically umami bombs. So, we're going to make sweet and sour chicken first. Right, onion in, be careful. Peppers in. Okay, pineapple in. A little bit of rice wine. Very, very important for this one because you've got batter. Because you've got batter, do not add the chicken yet. You add the chicken now before you add the sauce that hasn't been thickened. What's going to happen is that your chicken's going to go uh, soft, the skin. We want to keep the sauce crispy, I mean, uh, the chicken crispy. We're going to add the sauce in. Again, you don't have to add it all in one go because depending on the amount of chicken that you're using will determine the amount of sauce that you need. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to thicken this sauce. Basically, this is corn flour with cold water. Turn into a slurry. We're going to mix it up. And then we're going to add it very, very slowly to this mixture until we get the thickness that we want. What is the thickness that we want? The thickness that we want for this particular dish is probably the equivalent to a slightly thick gravy. And why do we want it slightly thicker than a gravy? Uh, we want it slightly thicker than the gravy only because the more wet this sauce is, um, the more soft the chicken will become when I add in. So now the sauce is, is pretty much thick. So if I draw a line along the spoon, it holds the line. We're going to add the chicken in. And we're going to serve up straight away. And that is your first dish. So your first dish here. Sweet and sour chicken. Again, in order to keep this sweet and sour chicken crispy, you must add it right at the end when your sauce has already been thickened so that it stays crisp. Okay, now if you wanted to, you can add a little bit of sesame seeds for this particular dish. Uh, if you wanted to, because I, I do think that actually dried shrimp goes deliciously well with um, Sweet and sour chicken. So, if I was making this at home, I would just put a few dots, and it's almost like caviar. This sauce, just put a few dots all over the place, and when you eat this, it will be like little nodules of, um, of, of umami, basically 
uh, exciting the palate when you eat it amongst the sweet and sour chicken. So you'll have some sweetness from the chicken, from the sauce, from the peppers. You get a crunchiness from the chicken, but you almost get these little nuggets of saltiness and umami from this dried shrimp um, chili oil. And that is the first dish, which is sweet and sour chicken with dried shrimp chili oil. Again, the, sh the shrimp chili oil is optional. Okay, so now we're going to cook the second dish. And again, I'm going to show you, this is real time. A kitchen at home, I only have one pan, right? Just wash it very, very quickly. It's very, very quick. Now, you can like a Thing is about Chinese cooking, a lot of it can be done in one pan. I don't know, I admit, I probably the first time I washed the pan in a long, long time. It's good to know that after all the years since I started off as a kitchen porter, I've still got some skills left. Okay, so the second dish now. Second dish now is black bean sauce. Very easy again. Okay, so how do we start? So, you know, there's, there's a few ways. If you go to other Chinese supermarkets, they'll have the, a similar sauce. It might be a little bit wetter. Basically, all it is is this, this concentrated sauce basically it's add, added some um some liquid added to it huh? uh, we had a question in can you do sweet and sour tofu absolutely an absolutely delicious dish my advice to you if you're going to do sweet and sour tofu is when you go to a chinese supermarket buy a really firm tofu so tofu that comes in multiple grades it's not just one thing that people think if you go to a chinese supermarket there's egg tofu super soft tofu medium soft tofu firm, extra firm, smoked, many, many times. If you're going to stir fry and put batter around a tofu dish, get a firm tofu. Um, yeah, and then when you fry it, you get an exactly the same outcome and it's delicious. Uh, the A1 website, if you want to buy these sauces, um, is www.a1.co.uk. Uh, so the black bean sauce, all in. I haven't held back on this one. Now inside this sauce, there's about nine different ingredients. So it's salted black beans, uh, ginger, spring onion, fermented soybeans, fermented black beans, um, some sesame. We're gonna bring up the boy. It's important to basically just give it a, give it a fry to warm it through, to really release the garlic and the ginger that's been cooked inside this relish. Then when, when we pack this sauce, we make it like a little bit more, we give it a little bit more texture. So we, we leave some of the whole black beans there. So if you're gonna make it into a sauce, then just smash it up a little bit. If you're gonna use this black bean sauce as a, as a dip for like some grilled meat, or you're gonna use it to put on top of fish before you steam it, then I wouldn't smash it up. I'll keep it as whole beans, which is how it arrives. But you can hear it now sizzling in a pan, which is good news. Right, from now I'm going to add the vegetables. Again, similar vegetables to the one before, just don't put the pineapple in. I don't think um, sweet and sour, I, mean, I don't think black bean chicken with pineapple is going to be a particularly great dish. Okay, because this one we didn't add any batter to the chicken, we can add the chicken now. Okay, as I said before, the principle, vegetables in, protein in, he glazed with some Chinese rice wine. Again, if you look at a lot of old cookery books, and uh, some chefs they say use dry sherry instead. You can't use Chinese rice wine. You know, guys, we live in 2020, and there is no excuse for you not to go um, and go and buy some proper Chinese rice wine and not use sherry. Um, you, know, you can get it in a in a supermarket nowadays in my local. Sainsbury's has it, uh, if not, get it online. I'm adding some water to this now. 
Again, don't add too much in one go. Again, how saucy you like your black bean chicken is a personal preference. It's not right and there's no wrong. You know, there are, I've been to uh, restaurants in China where the black bean chicken is very, very dry. It's almost like a, a dry stir fry. You go to other places in the UK or even places in Hong Kong and it's very different. The black bean chicken is very saucy. It's a personal preference thing. And don't get, don't get involved in a lot of the food snobbery that goes on where people think that. There's only a certain way that people can cook things. All right, for black bean chicken now, we've got it all in. I personally would add a little bit of black pepper. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of sugar. Entirely up to you. Um, according to your preference. Actually, I think because the sauce in itself has got such a concentrated flavour inside, I don't think it needs anything more. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny bit of this cornflour slurry. And cornflour slurry, if you let it sit, the cornflour will go to the bottom. You just need to mix it up again before you add it into your dish. Let it heat up and it will thicken the sauce. And then you're done. Uh, get your bowl here. Yeah, and we are done. There you go, it's a black bean chicken. Now, if I was going to add um, some additional garnishes on top of this dish, Probably add some chopped spring onion. Uh, this, this again is another one that you could easily add um, some dry shrimp paste. But actually, what my personal preference for this one is some of this meat paste. You put this on top. Again, it's just about adding those little extra dimensions of, of additional flavor. And also because this contains chili inside this one, and uh, it'll give a little bit of spice to it. So, just to run through today, I hope that most importantly, we're giving you some confidence to really experiment with your Chinese cooking once you understand these principles of marinating, uh, getting a sauce ready, cutting your veg ready, and then basically the stir frying process, which is very, very, very quick. Uh, so, what we have here, we have the sweet and sour chicken. And here we have the black bean sauce. Uh, just to recap, uh, what did you add from the bottle? Ah, oh, that was some dark soy sauce. Again, it's optional. So dark soy sauce, basically you add it for color. You do not add, um, you do not add dark soy sauce for seasoning because it's actually bitter. Um, and it's not particularly nice to use the seasoning. We use China, uh, dark soy sauce in a Chinese kitchen really for presentation purposes for rich stews, for stir fries, for rice and noodle dishes where we want the colour. The wok looks uh, quite heavy duty. It's not. It's not. It's a, it's a very domestic wok owned um, uh, made by the incredible uh, Mr. Ken Hom. Um, I'm pretty sure you can buy it everywhere. Um, he's basically the only person to buy woks from for the domestic market um, and I would definitely support my good friend. Um, and then uh, with regards to the sources, as I said, go onto the website, uh, www.awong.co.uk or the online store, uh, and that will lead you to a link where you can buy loads of the other ingredients, the, the, the sauces, the chicken, the beef, everything else, um, and good luck. But most importantly, think about it in terms of principle. Don't follow this as a recipe as a recipe. Think of it in terms of principle. Marinating the meat, preparing your sauce, cut your vegetables, get the thickener ready. Once you do that, everything is open to you. Thank you very much for joining. This is the third, and I think it's the last in the series. Uh, if you have any questions, get in contact with me on social media. So it's A Wong SW1. Any questions regarding any of this cooking, 
um, or where to buy stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be our sources. It can be someone else's there, some incredible sources out there uh, for hot pots, for stir fries, for soups. And I can point you in the right direction. And if not, we hope that we will see you very soon in a restaurant. Um, hopefully, we won't have to be two meters apart and we can still uh, talk to one another and smile at one another. Um, so yeah, we look forward to seeing you. And thank you very much for coming to support us.